<laughs> All right, sweet. Uh, so Kelly, thank you so much for, for having us. Um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, and then we can jump into like relay. Uh, but um, you know, the high level notes here are 2020 was a heck of a year. Uh, really? I think we're, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it was different for you. For me, I no, it was obviously a crazy year, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, and I, I think we're all looking forward. You know, we're we're we've got what like eight days left, uh, basically. Uh, and I think we're all looking forward to a better 2021, or at least one where we can see our see our loved ones uh, in person. Um, and so one thing we thought about was like, okay, if I'm an accountant or bookkeeper, and I was looking ahead at this coming year, what information or advice would I want? And I'd probably want advice from you know some of the leading voices in kind of cloud accounting uh, and bookkeeping. Um, right. So that's why we partnered with like Practice Ignition and Carbon um, and all of these these wonderful folks here. Uh, I see together. these faces. I see these faces, Joseph, and I'm just like, oh man, these are some super smart, forward-thinking people. There isn't one there that I don't just admire. I call the APIAs, accounting professionals. I admire. That, I mean, <laughs> the pack right there, right? Uh, absolutely. I love. I love that for, that acronym, APIAs. I might steal that. That is up there with like accounting famous. Um, yeah, oh yeah, accounting famous. <laughs> Or what if, what if somebody uh, somebody called it Q level Q level fame? <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Okay, go Not ahead. Famous. You go to an we accounting conference. Q, is in, Q yeah. is in QuickBooks. QuickBooks, right? Q level fame. I like that. Level. I know. Anyways, right. APIAs is all yours. Yeah, amazing. Um, and so the goals for this were really like asking the questions. You know, what are forward thinking firms taking from 2020 and applying ahead going into 2021? Um, and what can we actually help parse out from those learnings uh, so that other firms can actually make the most of this coming year? So before we jump into that, uh, shameless plug for Relay. If you're not familiar with us, we are business banking that makes bookkeeping easy. Um, we'll jump into the product uh, a little bit later. Um, but everything you hate about traditional banks, broken bank feeds, you know, no use read-only access, uh, and poor data, uh, we actually solve. Uh, really, well. and and you're coming our way here in Canada. Carry on. Yep, and we're coming coming to Canada uh, in in Q2. Um, and just want to call out to all the the very smart folks, all the APIAs uh, that contributed to this. Uh, without them, uh, this piece of content uh, definitely would not have been as meaningful. Um, uh, so really, a big shout out to all of these wonderful people. Right. Cool. So we'll go through like an overview. Uh, there is a downloadable asset. Uh, we'll provide a link um, in the in the Facebook post, um, so you can get the full like uh, 2021 playbook if you haven't downloaded it already. Um, but here, let's let's kind of go through the overview. Um, so there are a few things uh, we've kind of bucketed this out into like people, process, technology, um, and on the people side, like as we did these interviews, it became so obvious that the people were really what got everyone through 2020. And it was whether we were talking about like kind of the employees of the firm or even like the clients, right? Resilience was the word uh, that came up time and again. Um, and so, you know, as folks are looking at kind of 2021 and hiring, uh, they're really thinking about like, what is the thing that makes them unique uh, to be able to hire more effectively? Like, are they, you know, more e-commerce focused? Are they actually great at marketing, but perhaps uh, not as strong at, I don't know, operations or whatever it might be. Um, two is like establishing a plan for like upskilling themselves as, as founders, as well as their team. Uh, so it, it's funny, like we were discussing that bullet. It's like we, everyone unequivocally was surprised by how amazing their team was like in, in these like very clutch moments, right? It was very stressful right. uh, going back into, you know, I guess Q2 of, of this year, like March uh, on, onwards. Um, and so once they realized kind of how many gems they had on their team, uh, it, it became clear that doubling down and helping those people level up even more was really what was going to uh, benefit everyone uh, the most. Yeah. Yep. You know what? I love the way you just said that gems on their team, right? It's, it's so true. You know, you got to look after your gems. Yeah. It, and it's funny, right? It's like sometimes, you know, when life is just going on as it kind of normally was, perhaps you didn't get a chance to see those people shine. Right. right? And, and under pressure, they like suddenly came alive and, you know, surprised you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really cool. Um, it and then I think the thing like, 
you know, for, for folks like yourself, uh, maybe this was easy, uh, but a lot of people were going from kind of, you know, they were mostly remote, but just wanting to find more ways for people to stay connected. Um, because even though perhaps a lot of, you know, accounting and booking firms were remote already, um, there might've been some social isolation uh, on their teams, uh, especially with like lockdowns. Um, and so just trying to like make sure people aren't burned out. And there was like some level of concern of that being a thing. I think everyone's kind of concerned about it because we're all a little tired of COVID-19. Uh, and really? I, I, I mean, I am, Kelly. I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm taking the wrong temperature on this. You don't, you don't have the pulse, man. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know how this goes with me. My love. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're trying to find new ways to, to basically engage their team and raise morale. And so, uh, just as, by the way, as just as I'm going through this overview, all of this is like detailed uh, in the playbook. So it's a downloadable PDF. You can get it. You can keep it. You can read it. You can not read it. Um, it's it's pretty helpful. You can't uh, put it under your pillow, though. You, I mean, you could print it out uh, and put it under. Oh, print pillow. things? Okay, carry on. Keep, yeah. keep going, or yeah, you know I, I'm going to take it off the rails. Okay. All right. Um, and then and on, on the process side. Uh, you know, there there was a lot of talk of like documentation and standardization. So um, what they realized was, okay, as they're scaling their team, they need like founders uh, of the firms effectively need to not be this like bottleneck of information. Right. And documentation was like number one, an easy way to solve for that, and two, an easy way to make sure that everyone is following the same process. Um, and that's so valuable when you're able to deliver a consistent experience across your client base. Um, and then also increases efficiency when everyone's doing things kind of the same way. Yeah. Um, and then two was like investing in scalable like client communication. Um, I know there were people that like created uh, Slack channels uh, for their clients so they could stay and like stay in, stay in touch, right? Um, and looking for ways to kind of make it feel more personal and tied in. Um, I know our advisor, Live CA, was amazing about this. Is, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, they were in touch, I think, almost every week. Uh, with different different things, whether it was wage subsidies or what have you, and just being there and being supportive. Um, Did you say Live CA? Live CA. Have you heard of them? I think I have heard of them, like some guy named Josh and Chad, right? Yeah, J Josh and Chad. They're they're pretty unknown. Um, yeah, 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 I yeah. You know what? And I got I'm gonna do a quick shout out to Chad since you mentioned that. Is there anybody more generous to the industry? But no, I mean, like, he's just the realest guy. And we were talking two weeks ago or something, and we were just spitballing about some of this stuff. And he's just so interesting and calm and real. But anyways, that's my shout out to Chad. He, he, he is he, awesome. Yeah. So, you know, I, I hope, I hope, I hope one day, he, I hope one day he gets the credit he deserves. He is really an, under I don't think he, I don't think he cares. <laughs> that's what's so wonderful about him. He's just like, hey, what can I do to help you out? And, How's your day going? And and just being so cool. Anyways, we didn't want to turn this into the Chad show. <laughs> so awesome. Okay, carry on, Yosef. I'm always, I'm always game for a Chad love fest. Um, yeah. And then uh, just finding ways to kind of create visibility into each team member's workloads and just making sure that they have the room to, to really be successful um, and helping them balance their workloads so they can avoid, you know, any burnout. Um, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're we're looking at another half year of some version of this until the vaccine yeah. like truly really rolled out. Um, and then, as far as technology goes, uh, a lot of firms have kind of figured out their basic stack, right? Uh, but I actually I beg to differ. Do you think a lot of firms have figured out their basic stack, or do you think some forward-thinking firms have figured out their stack? I, I think that is probably the accurate way to put it. Yeah, um, from what I'm seeing. Yeah, I guess I guess what I what I compare it to is like the early days at HubDoc where no one had figured out anything. Um, right, there's that. Yeah, that that's fair though, right? It's it's got to be like how what percentage of firms do you think have actually figured this out? There's room to go. I'll tell you that. And, and even to take a step back, Yosef, and I know it's your show, but you know me. Yeah. Uh, I know some firms that were just getting by until they could go back to the office. They, they weren't thinking of this as as long term. They were thinking, OK, what are we going to put in place to just keep this moving until we're back in the office doing the same thing that we did before? Like you're not I mean, a lot of us aren't really seeing those firms. Yeah, but, but they're there and, and, and they exist. 
what you're talking about here are all of the people that are, are, are starting to kill it and they're putting it in place and they're they're ready to keep rolling and they're they're awesome and forward thinking. Okay, sorry, keep going. This, this is true, right? When you're talking about like a digital bank for small business owners, those folks who are still getting by with a fax machine um, are, are, are not gonna be talking to us. This is right. very true, yeah. yeah. Um, and so one of the other areas, and I know you're, I think you use 17 hats for this, if I'm remembering yeah. correctly. Folks have started investing in lead management and thinking about that life cycle for the clients. Um, I think 17 hats is what you use. Is, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, but there's a, there's a crap ton of them. I didn't swear there. I wanted to. There's a crap ton of them that are awesome. This is such an amazing time we live in for this kind of technology, not just the technology that powers our accounting processes but the ones that manage our leads and, and manage our clients and, and manage our workflow, this, it, it's hard to pick. There's so many great ones, right? That's, that is absolutely accurate. Um, and then trying to like, I think the third bullet really here is like striking a balance between data security and convenience. Hmm. So we all know the dirty secret of the accounting and bookkeeping community, which is clients share bank logins, right? Um, this is just the nature of it. Creates a lot of financial liability on the firms. Creates security risk for the clients. Um, it's just really not great. And so we are seeing more and more firms thinking about how do I actually solve that problem? Um, it's not enough to throw stuff in one password or LastPass or whatever you're using. And actually finding long-term solutions, perhaps like a digital bank like Relay, that it makes collaboration really easy. What's um, the name of that digital bank? I think it's called Relay. Relay. Okay. R E L A Y. Relay. Okay, carry on. Yeah, I hear it's really good. I hear it's really cool. good. Built, built for accounts and bookkeepers and their clients. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, cool. it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, what, what a world. 2020, right? This <laughs> technology. Um, and then... Okay, uh, but here's, and yeah. here's the thing with this Relay bank thing. Like, normally forward-thinking banking doesn't roll out in the U.S., so good on you guys that you're managing to rule it out in the US. That's kind of a brave move. I know it's a big market, but Canadians and Europeans and Australians, basically the Commonwealth countries, they're all over some cool new way of banking or, you know, tap to pay. So good on you guys. Okay, keep going, Yosef. Jesus, just, you know what? Just mute me for crying out loud. Jeez. Go. All right. Uh, and on the on the client side, so there, there were a few themes that uh, that came out. So number one, um, identifying which of your clients are actually at risk of falling behind technologically. Uh, we definitely saw, you know, kind of those laggards suddenly wake up and say, oh, I need to implement, you know, an AP solution. I need to implement document capture. Um, yeah. And there were kind of still some clients kind of holding out uh, similar in kind of fashion to the firm that you mentioned. It's like, hey, I'm just going to take this thing together until we can get back to the office. Um, and so it, it's interesting to see firms try to manage that risk. Like, do they offboard the clients? Do they have a very real conversation with the clients um, about kind of where, where they are. And so it's good yeah. to take a look at your own client list and figure out, you know, on the technology adoption curve, like who's kind of mature and who's still may, perhaps uh, a little bit behind. Um, and then I think this applies to all of us. Uh, it's that, you know, getting back to normal from this quote unquote new normal. I hate that phrase. Uh, <laughs> it's the worst. Um, it's it's going to take time. Um, and so, you know, a lot of a lot of firms would mention that like effectively we were like a financial therapist for these small business owners. Yes. And like, you know, as part of that duty, uh, I think letting them know that this is going to take some time, right? Um, and it's a marathon, not a sprint. Take care of themselves, take care of their mental health, take care of their physical health. Um, it's really, really so critical. Um, and then uh, the third bullet was really preparing shifts in consumer behavior. Um, so one, one of the folks, uh, I'm not even a shout out, uh, Chris Maxey, they, at, at their firm, they primarily focus on restaurants and hospitality. Um, and when we were talking about restaurants, I was like, so they must have been impacted pretty deeply given, given COVID. And he said, well, because restaurants have to turn over their menu and they're so used to being agile, they found new ways to be creative. And so they're certainly yeah. down from where they were, but they figured out like how to do like pop-up things or like try creative marketing ideas. And so I think that sort of stuff is gonna shift consumer behavior because it's a, perhaps a better experience uh, from like a, an eating perspective. 
Yeah, um, maybe. And, and you know what's interesting when you mention the restaurant? So I did a, a like a, a firm that I'm working with that has it's a franchise and that they I was doing <laughs> I was doing a session on online accounting. It was an intro one, though. So, you know, not not above my head. I'm, I'm all in on that. And what's interesting is people who were already doing restaurant accounting are uniquely positioned to shift to accounting for e-commerce because all the same puzzle pieces are there, right? You've got POS system, you've got different ways of selling things, you've got a number of mediums, all a way of accounting for things. And um, you're already using clearing accounts and you've already worked on connecting outside things or, or you have an understanding of zero sum sales receipts, whatever it is, because there's a thousand ways to do e-commerce right now, each unique to each you, you e-commerce client and restaurants are exactly the same. I mean, it's the same basis for accounting. I actually didn't think of that. It's a good point, right? Like there's so yes. much inventory. Um, inventory, yeah, it's got all the same moving parts. People just don't realize. Anyways, I took that totally off the rails, but when you're talking about being prepared for the shifts in consumer behavior, mm -hmm. don't be afraid of the e-commerce accounting if you're already doing uh, any kind of sort of retail or restaurant, especially accounting, your your skill set is there. You just need to adopt to some new technology for it, or that. adopt yeah. adopt the accounting to that whatever. <laughs> Interesting. It, it's a great point. Um, and then uh, lastly, is like investing in channels your prospects converge on. Um, so I know I've seen. Uh, I can't remember her name. She's actually not not on this list, but um, I see her on Twitter. She's on tax for a lot. She started doing TikToks. Oh, Lorelai, Lorelai, she's awesome. W Wilson. I want to say Wilson. Yeah, I yeah. want to say Lorelai Wilson. She's awesome. Like she shifted her social profile. Right. It's super right. good. It's super funny. It's light. It's super informative. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Nayo, uh, who's, who's oh. amazing. She started amazing. With Clubhouse. If you've ever heard of Clubhouse. Um, and she's like, it's like an audio kind of chat room type uh, social network. And so she started talking about like tax tips and things like that on there. Um, and so, you know, I think we all are trying to stay fresh and apply different strategies and approaches uh, to, to kind of getting our clients um, on board. Yeah. So there is so much, like every single bullet we quickly just covered there uh, has gone into great detail with resources, with checklists, um, with direct quotes from the wonderful people that informed that summary. Um, so if you'd love to download it, uh, we'll share the link uh, in the post. Uh, so it, hopefully it's up there. I think that would be correct. <laughs> I finally got to do that, Kelly. I'm like a YouTuber. I'm like a YouTuber. Um, and so you can just go ahead and download it. It's free. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's like 25 pages, 30 pages, something like that. Uh, so it's uh, I cool. took a I took a snort through it, and uh, I think it's I think it's a great resource. Love it. That's good. The does, endorsement doesn't get better than that. <laughs> cool. So here, let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit, um, yeah. and uh, let's take a look at Relay. Um, let's take a look at Relay. This is gonna be great. Be and so, so uh, quick shout out to Brian Claire, Brian. Uh, so this this is going. I, I I may share it out some other places, but it's going into the workflow watering hole. And Yosef and I had this session planned, and then this morning, like actually today, which is like the twenty third of December, didn't Brian Claire post something, not knowing because I didn't tell Brian I was meeting with you. I don't know if you told Brian you were meeting with me. And uh, doesn't Brian Claire post something about relay today? And I'm like, and then we got the all the what's what's relay and then here we are now we get to talk about relay because it's pretty Love exciting it. stuff Joseph. yeah okay sweet so um let, let's start out with just kind of why why we started this and the the problem we wanted to solve so uh back in kind of hubdoc days uh obviously hubdoc was known for like bank statement bank, fetching bank right hubdoc, yeah yeah um and and two uh like well that, that was basically what we were known for right like that was that was the really thing that we did well and oh, so, and don't forget check images and e-transfers and right, CSVs, right. CSVs. Getting, special, yeah. yeah, like getting access to banking data, super hard, right? Right. Still super hard today. And so when we thought about that problem and we looked at our, you know, our former partners at, at HubDoc, like Intuit and Zero, 
um, their number one feature request back then and still like today is actually just bank feeds that work, right? right. That's the bar. Um, like, it's not right. better national reporting. It's like not, you know, it's nothing else. It's just getting the data in. Yeah. And so what we realized was that the limiting factor on financial visibility for small business owners was actually access to financial information. Um, and as we thought about like, how do you actually solve it? We realized the only way to solve it is to actually be the bank and control the information. Um, and so that's why we started Relay. Uh, Relay is banking designed for growing businesses. We make it easy to collaborate through a user permission model. You can manage all your bills from your bank, bank accounts. So think about like an import from QuickBooks, approval workflows, everything you would want. Um, and best in class, like payment settlement times, because we're actually the bank account. Um, right. And then three, uh, you can manage all your expenses uh, from Relay, because we issue Relay cards. Um, we do all of this in conjunction with a bank called Evolve Bank and Trust. They've been around since 1925. They have half a billion dollars in assets. Um, uh, it's really through them that we're able to offer FDIC insured accounts up to 250 grand. Um, as Kelly mentioned, uh, you know, we're not live in Canada yet, but we are live in the United States. Uh, so if you do have clients um, who are Canadians with a US entity, uh, we could certainly provide banking uh, for them because um, we have a lot of folks uh, who, who do that uh, with us. Um, so before we jump into the product itself, the reason firms love us and they're, they're excited about it, it's basically three things. One, uh, we give them a partner portal where they can manage access to their clients' bank accounts, uh, like the Relay bank accounts, and manage their staff's access. Two, we have direct bank feeds into the accounting system, into Zero and QuickBooks Online. We're one of no, 10, more, no, no more scraping? No scraping. It's API to API. So it's our software targeting their software. Um, and if there's ever an issue, we can fix it within 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, it's really easy. Uh, and we're one of 10 banks out of the 5,000 banks in the United States, 10 banks have this direct connection. Three, uh, enriched transaction data. So when we're talking about check images, as an example, uh, we actually get the check data in, uh, in Relay and pass it across into the accounting system. Awesome. Cool. Should we very, jump in? Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's jump in. Yeah. All right. Cool. So uh, I'm going to log into uh, an accountant partner, partner portal. Uh, we are collectively scholar hunting of South Boston bookkeeping. Um, and so here I have my list of clients, Station, Stacy's Stationery, Henry's Hat Hut. Um, and uh, what a lot of firms do is they set up their partner portal uh, and then they go ahead and register for a Relay Bank account uh, to test it out, see how it works. They can sign up online inside of 10 minutes, no paperwork, no branch, no people. Um, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, and then they can actually uh, invite clients uh, into Relay. So uh, I have my client, you know, Jane at business.com. I can kick out an invite to her. She can go ahead and sign up online inside of 10 minutes, no paperwork, no branch, no people. Um, and then what we see more and more firms doing is they actually use like an email alias uh, to do the invitation themselves and the setup themselves. Right. So Scalar plus Jane Biz at South Boston, uh, bostonbooks.com and they kick out the invites themselves, they do the setup and they switch over the email address uh, right. when it's ready to pass to the client. Cool. And then you can manage staff access as well. Uh, so here we've got Sean McGuire, he's our assistant bookkeeper. He's only working with one client, so let's kind of put him to work. Uh, to give him access to a client account, all I have to do is hit this add client button. I choose the client that I want him to have access to, and then I choose the level of access that he should have. That's so awesome. Yeah, tell me what the other accesses are. Bill yeah, so bill, bill payer is, you know, you're paying bills on behalf of the client. The nice thing is anytime you touch money inside a relay account, even if right. it's just a transfer between two relay accounts, um, there's an audit trail attached. So you can see that it was Sean that initiated that transaction. Now, can you set it up for approvals? Yep. So I can actually have Sean be a bill payer here and yes. he can submit bills for approval uh, from the sm uh, small business owner. And then the small business owner can approve the bill and right. then uh, Sean can actually pay the bill. Right, because we're looking for those internal controls, right? Bingo, yeah. yeah. Sweet. Uh, so let's <laughs> take a look at the client account. So we've talked a lot about like kind of access to information. So, you know, partner portal, staff permissions, uh, direct bank feeds. Um, but now let's actually talk about like the quality of the information. Um, so when a check is deposited uh, at a traditional financial institution, 
um, you get like check one, two, three, four uh, right. is the information. And then you got to kind of hunt it down and hopefully HubDoc works and, you know, all these things, right? To get you the data you need. Hopefully um, the Jamies didn't just hear that little minor slag. I, hey, it, it, it burns me as much as it burns them, I can tell you. I know, I know. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so the nice thing with Relay is when a check is deposited, you can actually see the payer's name, um, the deposited amount, the date, who deposited it, as well as any notes associated with the check. Um, and then you also get the check image uh, here as well. That is kicking. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is kicking. And we pass this information across into QBO and Xero. That, including the check image? Not the check image, but right, you can okay. have kind of two screens up, which is how I uh, yeah. do the bookkeeping. That's why we have all of these screens, right? It's not for any other reason. No, <laughs> not for Facebook. Okay, carry on. Uh, yeah. Um, and then for card transactions, uh, we actually standardize and enrich all of the information. Uh, so um, instead of a transaction coming through as like Starbucks, one, two, three, winter lane, it just comes through as Starbucks. Facebook comes through as Facebook. Uber comes through as Uber. Um, so, you know, in terms of reliability of banking, bank rules that you right. create, they become more reliable because it's actually standardized data. Um, so it's not Home Depot, uh, like my construction client, right? Like at, at some point you're winding up with like 25 Home Depots because he works across Canada. It's like, really? Right? Really? Exactly. Right? It's Please, no. Yeah, it gotcha. doesn't matter. Yeah, you want to keep it clean. Yeah, uh, for sure. I don't need 25 Home Depot vendors. That's exactly it. And so yeah. we standardize and enrich this information. Um, we also get a merchant category code from MasterCard because Relay cards are MasterCard debit cards. Right. And uh, we get this four or five digit code and we pass that into our categorization engine um, and pass up this kind of category information. Um, we, can, we can override that though? Uh, so it's just additional context today. Okay. So right. it passed across, I think, in the memo line in QBO in the right. zero feed. It's it, it's a little bit. Uh, I think it, it falls into the description. Um, right. So you can use it if it's helpful. Um, right. I think what we'd say on like category stuff is like eighty percent of cases it doesn't matter, right? Facebook, it's advertising. Uber, it's travel. Starbucks, right. meals and entertainment. Um, where it can be helpful is in the 20% of kind of exceptions where all the accounting work really and bookkeeping work is, uh, where it's a gas station, you know, in, in a small, you know, a suburban town. Yeah. Three hours sure. out of the city. <laughs> yeah. And so now, you know, it's like a gas station instead of having okay. to do the Google search and, and do the hunt um, and play. Okay. The cool. Uh, accounts. So you can have up to 20 checking accounts with Relay, no account fees, no minimum balances. Um, all really easy. Um, three things I love about this page. One is we connect to 100% of US banks. So you can pull across funds from Wells Fargo or your local regional bank. Um, and we settle the funds in one business day. Uh, so they come across really quickly. Um, you know what? You're, you're, I got to move you there. I moved you. I had you right in, in my line. Okay. So we, okay. What? Huh? Tell me about this. What? Okay, so so basically, um, we want to make it easy for people to move money into Relay, just as easy it is as it is to move money out. Um, right. And the way that we make it easy to to pull funds in is we enable you to connect to your Bank of America account or Wells Fargo account, your local regional uh, bank account, right. um, and then pull the funds across into Relay. Okay. Um, and we settle those funds in one business day. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we're connecting to some of our other outside accounts. Exactly. That's amazing. Do you know how hard it is to get money from Bank of Montreal to CIBC? Because I know exactly how hard it is. If it's over $3,000, it's a real pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so, yeah. so we're able to move you know, large amounts of money pretty quickly. Um, uh, and a lot of firms, what they do is they position Relay actually as a complement to the existing bank that a client might have. Um, right. And part of the reason is because one, it's easy to get the money in. And then two, they just focus on like a pain point that the client is experiencing. So it might be, you know, AP automation. Um, and we can kind of talk about that and, and how that starts. Well, let's talk about the two other great things uh, about this page. One, 
uh, I think we've all been inside our banking portal trying to figure out where that PDF is, where our account details. And you no. know, you, <laughs> um, you know, you checked like one time last year and you found it, but you don't know where the heck to find it anymore. Um, right. Now you can actually just copy uh, the your account number and, in the case of the U.S., routing number. Um, uh, so it's really easy and straightforward. Um, and then uh, if you want to create a new bank account, you just hit add account, you name it. Uh, this is going to be my fun account. I choose who should have access. I click create and I'm instantly provisioned with a brand new bank account with a new account number and routing number. Okay. So I'm just, I'm being devil's advocate here. Yeah. How do you keep bots from creating bank accounts? I'm thinking about you guys, not, not, not for the end user. I'm just like thinking about Joseph West. Yeah, well, I appreciate the I appreciate the concern. Um, so <laughs> sort of, there's a there's a few things, right? So one is um, uh, we have stringent kind of requirements in terms of uh, doing KYB and KYC on anyone that's coming in to our system. Um, so we have to get their articles of incorporation, their EIN oh, okay. application letter, all these things. Um, and then two, you can have up to twenty accounts, right? Um, I'd say the average business owner maybe has like two or three. Um, you know, it really depends how the business uh, runs. Um, on the statement side, if you ever need your statements, you can export them, you can download them, you can email them. Uh, we actually have statement sync to HubDoc and Receipt Bank. So we automatically send across statements each month uh, into your document ca capture. Really? So, yeah. Slick. Um, Cool, uh, and then cards, so you can issue up Oh, to I, you said articles of incorporation. Can sole props have an account like this? Yes, they can. Yeah, okay. so, so we support uh, corporations. So this is all US, right? So corporations, LLCs, and sole props. Right, what not, uh, not-for-profits or charities? Uh, we do support non-for-profits. In the US, they're typically like incorporated uh, okay. either as an LLC or a corporation, and they just have a separate filing. Got it. Um, so. Yeah, okay. and, we do, and we do general partnerships as well. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, so you can issue up to 50 cards per business. Um, they can be physical cards, they can be virtual cards. Um, it's pretty sweet. Uh, so to create a new one, all I do is I click the create button. Um, I choose a nickname. I might say this is my card for location A. If I have a business with multiple locations, issuing a card per location can be really helpful. Uh, and then it can be a physical card or a virtual card. A virtual card is just like a physical card. It's just you don't get the piece of plastic and you can see your card number online. It's great for kind of online purchases. Um, and then I choose my source account. So let's say this was a card issued for the marketing team. The value right. of having these multiple accounts is I can do segregation of funds. Uh, so okay. I can put aside $10,000 into that marketing account, provision access to my marketing team with a card or perhaps just a user permission to see that account without being able to see the rest of my finances as a business owner. Got you, but I have a question. So they're almost like pre-funded cards. Is that what they are? They're, well, they're debit cards. Oh, they're, oh, pay attention, Kelly. We're not on the Visa card or the MasterCard yet. Well, well it, is, it, is, it is a MasterCard debit card. Oh, it is. Okay, I got you. I'm, I'm now playing catch up. Gotcha. Yeah, so you, you can use it just like you would a credit card. Um, right. It, but it is a debit card. Okay, I got you. Cool. So you're not paying it off on some weird date on the fifteenth of, like, the fourteenth of the month. Yeah, we're not we're not pulling something to get money. Yeah, nothing. nothing uh, I got. A, I have a question for you. Statement yeah. dates. Do you have a standard for the statement dates? What are you doing about statement dates? Um, I think the most reasonable thing that we could figure out was just to do it at the end of the month. Um, okay, that is the most reasonable thing. So is that what the game is? It's Okay, because right now it's it, when I when I onboard uh, a client, or even if I am doing a, a file review, whatever, it's always one of those things. Call your bank and get your statement changed, right? Otherwise, you got to do a soft rec, and then, right? So, okay, that's actually a big win. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but I'm such a a stickler for closing the books and having a hard reconciliation at the end of that period not just going with some loosey goosey soft wreck, but which is a second one, right? Okay. I know I over talked that, but that's great news. Yeah. And so like the, these are kind of lessons we've learned working with the accounting community, right? right. Like statements should come out on a certain date because it's helpful to actually do reconciliation. Uh, file names of the statements, really helpful. 
to actually have yes. the beat in them as opposed those to those strings. Ridiculous. Um, right? Or if it's a partial statement, let us know, right? Like, anyways, it's a, there's a lot of little, like, you know, to, to other people outside the community, little things, but they're actually big things. Yeah, um, well, that's a big thing right there. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so I can issue the card to the business or to uh, an employee, um, and I can set up limits. So I can say, uh, you know, $250 a day for Carolyn here, uh, and she can take $30 out of an ATM. And then I can allow or disallow foreign transactions. Got you. Yeah. Um, ooh, moved across too quickly there. And then once I've set it up, it's not all set in stone. I can change the nickname. I can change the limits. I can freeze the card. I can change the pin. Do it from the web. and do it from our iPhone or our Android apps. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Payments. Um, so uh, at a base level, everyone gets uh, ACH, which is like kind of like e-transfer. Uh, or it's yeah. like electronic payment, uh, domestic wires, international wires, and checks. Uh, all incoming payments are free. Uh, outgoing domestic wires are $10. Outgoing international wires are $50. Uh, we're working on getting that international wire fee down. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's how that works. And then the most exciting thing, and I think this is the thing that makes Relay especially unique, um, is that we've integrated into QuickBooks Online to automatically pull in unpaid bills. Um, oh, and their okay. associated payees. So uh, what it looks like is, is this. Uh, we have this bill from Graphics by Cindy. Uh, we can see it's for $675. We can see that it's unpaid. And we see all the key details related to the bill. I can even see actually the source document. This isn't a real source document in case you can't That's tell. not a real source document? I know, it's crazy. It is crazy. Um, and as uh, so we pull that across from QuickBooks, so if you're creating those transactions in uh, from Receipt Bank or HubDoc, we're pulling all that information across. Um, and then uh, we have approval rules. So these are based on amount um, and it's multi-stage. So you can set up, uh, you know, Kelly, you need to approve it first and then uh, Yusuf approves it, or it can be Kelly and Yusuf approve it, approves it. And then Tiffany and Brian have to approve it uh, before it can be paid. So it's like it. thoughtful, it's complex, but it's done in a way that's actually very easy to use. Um, so if I submit this bill for approval, this is what it looks like. So I can see the status of the bill is now awaiting approval. Uh, if people are taking their time when we pay this bill, we can send a reminder. And then okay. once the bill is approved, I can go ahead and initiate payment. Um, and the really cool thing is that uh, not only is this next day ACH or same day wire, right? In terms of the speed with which you can pay um, your vendors, uh, which is really cool. So you don't have to sit on like, you lose two days or three days of kind of cash flow. Um, but once I initiate this ACH, we'll change the status of the bill from approved to payment in progress. We'll go into QuickBooks, we'll mark the bill as paid. And then okay. once the ACH settles on the relay side, we send across a bank fee transaction that just matches up against that paid bill. Um, so there's no notion of like a clearing account in the, in the relay context. Magic, got you. That's awesome. How many approvers? Uh, as many as you want. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, and you already said they have different different levels. Now, uh, what about uh, is anything coming for uh, receiving payments? Uh, AR is, is on our list. We want to make sure the, the AP side is like really tight and perfect. Uh, right. Um, right. And then uh, once we have right. that, we'll move across to accounts receivable. Um, and the, the way that we think about it is like kind of twofold. One is it makes sense that people would have like a relay link of some sort where they could get paid. Um, and then two, doing things around like revenue reconciliation, like building integrations into say like a Shopify or a, a big commerce um, wow. and enriching that information. Um, and that kind of like you think about the kind of the downstream effects of that on the accounting and bookkeeping um, and it, it saves a lot of time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool, um, and that's that's basically it. So you can manage all your integrations uh, from your settings. So you can manage your bank feeds, you can manage the bill pay stuff. Um, you can even export account statements to HubDoc or Receipt Bank. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and we have lots of businesses that use Relay for like kind of multi-entity stuff uh, where they have multiple entities, they want it all under one login. So we make it easy for them to kind of register a second business. Uh, you have real two-factor authentication. So if you use real like, two-factor authentication, yes, not the app. 
Right, exactly. Not SMS, uh, because that is less secure. Right, um, yes. Yeah. And uh, you also have session activity, so you can see what time someone's logged in from where, um, which is which is helpful uh, just from a security perspective. And that's that's basically it. Uh, we have great customer support. You can always call us uh, Monday to Friday, uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, and then we have email support uh, around the clock. Do you um, have the same uh, cell phone number you've always had? Can I just text you? And you can text me. You can text me. There's a lot of customers that have texted me. Yes. <laughs> you should you should have changed it from the old days, Joseph, if you were smart, but there you go. Okay. I'm sorry. Behave, Kelly. It's awesome. I it's uh, you know, all, all I need to know is when are you coming to Canada? And I know you said probably Q2, right? Yeah, we're we were hoping that it was gonna be like early Q1. A couple things didn't kind of bounce our way. Uh and we're we're ultimately beholden to the other to the banks, right? Sure. Um, so I think Q2 is probably reasonable, uh, but we're doing our best to to get live as soon as possible. Um, okay. I mean, we are we are here in Toronto, so we would like to be live here. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. Because and I know you I know you uh, know some guinea pigs that'll happily make some guinea pig noises around this and uh, test drive it all for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's so cool. Cool. Well, thank you for having us. This was awesome. Well, thank you for being had. <laughs> <laughs> you can turn off the recording now. Yeah, okay. <laughs>